thank you all for joining uh, on this interesting session of uh, what do investors look uh, while uh, <coughs> uh, uh, while funding in a company so it would be great if uh, you guys can start by introducing yourself that uh, what do you do and what what is it that you want to understand from this session so that it will help us structure it for the better so uh, i mean if you if one by one if everybody can introduce themselves please along with what is it what is the takeaway that you want from this particular session i see jaydeep uh, my 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 name is jaydeep mehta i am a managing partner of a law firm lexfit advisors llp we are advocates and solicitors operating from bombay ahmedabad and new delhi okay. okay and great and what do you want to understand from this session any any key takeaway so that i will keep that in mind uh i am more interested mostly in the understanding the term sheet preparation okay term sheet preparation great good yeah fine that's amazing uh thank you sir uh hi good morning hi so what I'm, do you do i'm kishan yeah. kansal i am an advocate uh, by profession and also a qualified uh, chartered accountant okay uh, and my office is uh, an independent practice in connaught place delhi oh great okay and what do you want to uh, key take away from this session so perhaps i want to understand what is the procedure and the process uh, a, a basic overview of the process when the investors okay. uh, enter into funding and, and what all documents are required okay uh, with a special focus on uh, perhaps share subscription agreements and shareholders agreements yeah go ahead yeah yeah so i am finally a law student and okay. uh, i would like to ask sumit sir said like we uh, uh, like to know the documents and procedures which which are needed while having that you know um, starting of how investor should do the what are the procedures mm-hmm. which need to be done and what are the laws which we can look into and how we can guide us guide, guide them when they ask us like what we shall do how we shall because i have seen your earlier videos like yeah. what is the stages of funding and you have also dis- discussed about term sheet in the last right. video Yes, yeah. So I have seen that, but uh, I would like to know more about it, like how the procedure shall go further. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Thank Good. You. I'll explain that. Uh, Kartavya. Uh, Great. Kartavya. Yeah. Would you want to introduce uh, yourself? Sir, my name is Kartavya Nema. I am fourth year law student. I yeah. am currently working in a private company. Uh, sir, okay. I want to know. Uh, the uh, funding in case of startup and private company. What is okay. difference process and what law is applicable? Is can any discrimination about startup can funding and private company can funding uh, okay. in laws? Uh, okay. so in case any difference between uh, we are funding on uh, foreign uh, uh, then India and we are what मतलब company can hmm. funding and depend on her conditions. and what okay. is what types of funding is conduct so laws will be different apply and can okay. one apply okay theek okay. hai cool okay fine so i guess uh, let's let's start so okay so largely what i have uh, understood is the flavor where uh, the interest is more towards uh, funding uh, in terms of how does a funding happens uh, with and how is a startup or startup funding different from a normal company funding and more importantly people are also interested in understanding the various documentations that are involved in the stages of funding including term sheet shareholders agreement on all of that okay i'll try to answer this one by one but uh, i would also uh, i mean if it would be a two way communication that would be great because then the session could be much more interesting okay so first of all to understand what is a dif- let me take the first question which is the startup and uh, the company and its funding okay so first of all if you want to understand what is the difference between a company and a startup see technically a company is a nomenclature okay uh, uh, okay so the government has basically defined startup as uh, those set of uh, companies uh, whose uh, turnover earlier it was 25 crores now it has been increased to 100 crores. okay now the purpose of doing this is in many folds okay so let's say for example you want to apply for government contracts okay so earlier uh, startups did not qualify under government contracts because there was no nomenclature for startups for applying for tender 
okay so uh, therefore what government said that uh, government said that okay fine what i will do is i will try uh, to put a startup also into the sme category so that now what benefit that they have is that uh, 30% so when you apply for government contracts and tendering okay there is a reservation for 30% so 30% of those contracts should be awarded to smes okay so now if the startup have qualified in that they also get that preference of of being part of the sme and then they, they can therefore apply for government contracts okay so that is the first thing please keep on asking me questions wherever you feel that you would want to so that i would be in a better position to uh, further have uh, discussions on this okay so this is the this is the first step why uh, this definition of startup was required okay because otherwise before that it was a very loose structure okay second is another definition why you want to do uh, a startup and its funding uh, a startup and its various definition was because uh, see government had many schemes in terms of grants in terms of so you had uh, grants for startup so if you are applying for patent there is a refund for that uh, if you up, go to an international event government repays you that okay then there is grants which startup wow. give at various stages whether it is at the idea stage or at the funding stage okay so you wanted a common platform uh, where you, you can basically amalgamate all of that and there is a policy that can be drafted along with that so for that a definition of startup was required so because of all of these reasons government had basically come up with startup policy so that it can be taken as a uh, kind of a more in a serious way okay now a startup is a nomenclature technically a startup can be a private limited company a startup can be a partnership firm a startup can be an llp it can also be a proprietorship firm but generally a proprietorship firm does not qualify in funding at least from the government position it has to be either a partnership firm an llp or a private limited company preferably every and if you also are looking for investments through investors they prefer that if it is a private limited company okay because generally the funding happens in two ways either it happens uh, okay so this is how it happens please stop me wherever you think you you would want to stop me okay so this is how the <coughs> funding happens now what happens is that uh, in a in a in a particular startup when you come towards the funding piece okay there is uh, two ways in which the funding can happen one is an equity funding okay and one is a debt funding okay now equity funding uh, there are various layers to it okay there is uh, equity there is convertible debt now all of this is absolutely important for you to understand because ultimately when we move towards the term sheet you should know what all are the various clauses that have been discussed at the time of deal structuring because that will only eventually boil down to a term sheet and then eventually a shareholders agreement okay that is why i'm kind of slightly going towards the basics if those some people understand that is great if some people uh, i hope that is okay in case if you want to uh, want me to move forward directly to deal structure that's a different thing or otherwise i'm assuming if nobody objects i'm going slightly from the basics so that everybody understands okay okay so this is what a startup and why was a startup policy required and why was a, a a a definition of startup that was required because you can get uh, uh, you can get preferences in sme funding you can get preferences in uh, sme tenders you can get grants you can get patent uh, patent uh, uh, repayment backs you can get tax benefits so a startup can get 3 years continuous tax benefits out of the 10 years of its existence okay then uh, they had created a fund of fund of close to 10000 crore ka corpus which they wanted to distribute now how will they distribute somebody has to qualify for that okay so to qualify uh, that there has to be a basic parameter so what was that basic parameter that you need to be recognized as a startup but how will you be recognized as a startup that you have to get certified with a government agency what is that government agency it is dip okay so that basically form the premises of it okay now when we come to <coughs> deal structuring okay so let's say you are a company and uh, x uh, there is some set of investor who wants to invest okay in your company okay now what kind of investment that they would want to in the company 
it would largely be an equity investment okay a debt investment at a startup stage is relatively slightly difficult because generally what happens is that there are venture capitalists who basically invest basis debt but for them to do that okay it is based on your cash flow returns how much cash flow that you have generated how are you positive in your cash flow or not is the is are you break even are you moving positive towards your ca- cash flow currently how will you repay that okay now generally at the early stage of a startup life cycle they are not cash positive okay it is very difficult so therefore if you assume that you may get a debt from a venture capital so what will happen is that uh, there is uh, no when i was saying debt so so debt if you apply through venture capital which we called as as venture debt it is relatively is difficult for a startup or a company to get that kind of a funding because it is largely dependent on your cash flow cash flow means kitna cash hai company mein so jaise agar aapka aapka kitna net profit hai aur wo jo profit hai wo kitna aap use kar rahe ho company ko again reinvest karne mein theek hai to agar aap cash positive hoge tabhi to aap interest bhi bear kar paoge theek hai to the point is that एट दी वेंचर डेट स्टेज दे लुक एट वेरियस पैरामीटर एक डिस्काउंटेड कैश फ्लो मॉडल होता है जहां पर वो क्या करते हैं कि आपके नेक्स्ट तीन साल पांच साल का कैश फ्लो जो है प्रोजेक्ट करते हैं ठीक है बेसिस वॉट एवर इज योर करेंट सेट ऑफ आपका फाइनेंशियल और उस पर कुछ हेयर कट लगाते हैं बेसिस देर अंडरस्टैंडिंग और उसके बेसिस पे वो जो है वो धारणा निकालते हैं कि क्या हाँ ये जो ये जो कंपनी है इट इज गुड वी कैन गिव हिम डेट ही कैन रीपे बैक एंड इवन इफ ही डज नॉट रीपे बैक ये डेट को जो है दे हैव एन ऑप्शन टू कन्वर्ट इट इन टू इक्विटी एट सम सॉर्ट ऑफ स्वैप रेशियो ठीक है तो वो वो कर सकते हैं ठीक है बट उसके चांसेस रिलेटिवली कम होते हैं ठीक है तो दूसरा तरीका क्या होता है कि वो जो है डेट रेस करें थ्रू बैंक नो बैंक हैज दी स्कीम जो मुद्रा स्कीम है जिसमें टेन लैख तक का जो है आपको लोन मिल जाता है ठीक है दैट इज वॉट यू कैन गो थ्रू बट फॉर दैट यू हैव टू गो थ्रू बैंक यू कैन अप्लाई एनी बैंक एंड दे कैन बेसिकली गिव यू दैट लोन बट यू नो वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट वेल दिस इज अ गुड पॉलिसी एंड इट हैज वर्क ऑल्सो टू सम एक्सटेंट बट इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू गेट इट बिकॉज देर लॉट ऑफ कंप्लाइंस दैट यू नीड टू फॉलो इन टर्म्स ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंटेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ दे आस्किंग द प्रोजेक्शन एंड इवेंचुअली Uh, I mean, I should not say this, but this is true that banks' के case में क्या होता है कि funding largely balance sheet based रहता है. तो startup at his early stage of funding, uh, उसका balance sheet ना या तो होता नहीं है और अगर होता भी है, even if it is private limited, उतना strong होता नहीं है. तो उनको वो मिलना जो होता है वो थोड़ा relatively मुश्किल होता है. So while it is a good scheme on paper, actual implementation में people find a challenge because it is difficult to get debt from the bank at this stage. so the only third kind of investment that that is left for a startup or a company is equity investment theek hai and that is why they land up at investors for investing for investment okay now what happens is that in the equity investor uh, uh, piece uh, there are two kinds of investments that can happen there can be two टू ब्रॉडली टू काइंड ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर ठीक है जो आपका डिस्कशन होता है डील स्ट्रक्चरिंग में ठीक है which then eventually forms into term sheet सबसे पहला होता है कि इफ यू आर श्योर लेट से यू हैड अ डिस्कशन विद सम सेट ऑफ इन्वेस्टर ओके यू हैव प्रेजेंटेड योर मॉडल ही हैज प्रेजेंटेड हिज व्यू पॉइंट्स एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट एंड सपोज देयर इज एंड यू फिगर्ड आउट ओके फाइन आई आई वांट टू रेज फंड्स फ्रॉम यू ओके सो दे से ओके फाइन हाउ मच फंड यू वांट लेट्स आई एम जस्ट हाइपोथेटिकली सेइंग दैट लिसन आई वांट टू क्रोर ऑफ रुपीस दे से ओके फाइन इफ यू वांट टू क्रोर ऑफ रुपीस how will you utilize this 2 crore of rupees what is the plan of utilizing this 2 crore rupees uh, i am just giving a mock this thing so that you will understand what set of conversations that actually happen and that which basically transpires into term sheet so he says okay nahi ya 2 crore ka kon 2 crore to aapko chahiye ya you need 2 crores what will you do with that 2 crores so i say okay fine this is my utilization plan okay and it has to be fairly detailed and you cannot say it is a marketing i will do some portion of it in marketing some portion of it as hiring you have to specify when you say hiring what kind of a hiring you want so let's say if it is online courses are so you say ki um, i want people in content team i want people in marketing team but in marketing this is how i want to bifurcate them this person will do digital media this person will do social media this person uh, i am using only for email marketing if it is content i want to do these kinds of content stuff like that or if it is qsr i want uh, these many people this would be chefs this would be so chef so it has to be very very detailed 
through. So once he understands the fund utilization, then he has two options. He says, okay, fine, the fund utilization is great, but why do you want two crore up front? I mean, there could be one set of discussion where investors say, okay, fine, the fund utilization looks great and all. But uh, then the question is, uh, he will think is, does he need two crore up front? one shot or does can he can we give two crores in two tranches okay so uh, generally what happens is that where, there are some cases only where you get a bullet payment where you will get these two crores up front which we call it as bullet payment okay uh, there are only very uh, but in majority of the case uh, it is basically they give in they give money in tranches so they say ki yaar hum isko na ek ek crore ke do tranche mein de dete hain hum ek crore aapko abhi de denge ek crore will give you in 5 months or 6 months or whatever this is your fund utilization that what you have so unka idea ye hoga ki ye fund utilization ko dekhne ke baad hum aisa kya kar sakte hain ki jisse cost optimize kar sake taki ye abhi de aur fir uske baad itna set of capital baad mein de kya usse kaam chal jayega ki nahi chalega now why do they do that because they want to hedge their risk suppose i give you If it is required that two crore upfront, che, there is no other way. Then, so they will give. But if they do tranche based, they hedge their risk. What they do is they try to lock in your valuation today, okay? And they say, listen, I give you one crore because this is my understanding. I feel that you need immediately one crore and another one crore in five months or four months. Okay. So what will happen is they say I'll give you one crore and this subsequent one crore which I'll give you after four months, five months would be based on some milestone. Which he will mutually discuss. Now, what could be that milestone? Let's say, for example, if it is um, any company, if it is FMCG, if it is into uh, some a, a company which is doing, uh, uh, let's say QSR, ले लो. तो आपके अभी पांच outlets खुले हैं. I want you to open another two outlets or three outlets. Then I will give you this much set of capital. So some sort of milestone that that they will do. or they will say ki listen um, if uh, if if suppose you are into uh, this segment fmcg segment they say ki okay fine uh, you have introduced shampoo a variant you have introduced a uh, a uh, a serum variant uh, i want this shampoo segment that you are currently doing a volume of right now 2000 units per month or 1000 to 1000 units per month i want this to be increased to 1400 units or 1500 units so to do that you would need some sort of expansion which you take that money from me theek hai ki aapko plant mein ya product expansion mein marketing mein aapko kharcha chahiye ka to aap wo mere se le lo lekin isko 1400 1500 unit ko becho taki fir hum ek economies of scale pe aayenge और फिर आपको सब्सिक्वेंट सेट ऑफ कैपिटल चाहिए होगा एक और नया प्रोडक्ट लैंड इंट्रोड्यूस करने के लिए ऐसा सॉर्ट ऑफ डिस्कशन हो सकता है ठीक है तो इस तरीके से वो ट्रांचेस में ब्रेक करने की कोशिश करेंगे ताकि एक तो फंडिंग का जो जस्टिफिकेशन है वो ज्यादा क्लियर हो सके दूसरा उनका हिज रिस्क हैज हो जाए इस तरीके से कि वैल्युएशन तो आपसे आज लॉक इन ले लेंगे लेकिन अगर कल को आपने एक करोड़ अभी ले लिया और आप वो माइलस्टोन मीट नहीं कर पाए और फिर आपने उनको उन्होंने आपको बफर भी दिया कि चलो और ट्राई कर लेते और ट्राई कर लेते फिर भी आप मीट नहीं कर पाए दे मे नॉट बी लाइबल टू पे यू द सेकंड ट्रांस बिकॉज यू हैव नॉट हिट द माइलस्टोन सो देयर रिस्क गेट्स हेज सो मोस्ट ऑफ द इन्वेस्टर वुड प्रिफर टू डू इट ट्रांस पेमेंट सो दैट दे कैन हेज देयर रिस्क ओके दैट बिकम्स वन ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल पार्ट ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंटेशन इन अ टर्म शीट इज what sort of funding which is the first part of term sheet is what sort of funding that you require and can we pay this funding in bullet payment or in tranche payment so this is the background how it happens in an actual investor discussion and how it transpires into it so basis this logic they will then figure out whether we should give him in bullet payment or whether we should give him him tranche payment and if you are giving him in tranche payment what sort of my when we will give him in that tranche payment and what sort of milestone it should be matched with okay please ask me questions wherever you guys feel like okay the second set of uh, question is which is extremely i think most of you guys would want to understand is the valuation okay how to lock in the valuation okay so valuation of the company how it is uh, determined is uh, let's say your company has 1000 shares i'm just giving an example okay let's say your company has 1000 shares and let's say i am assuming the uh, right now uh, the uh, you have just formed the company it is 1000 shares and each share value is 100 rupees okay so what will be your valuation of the company the valuation of the company is number of shares into value of each share so 1000 rupees into 100 rupees 
which is 1 lakh rupees so generally people which is your authorized share capital so generally when people start the company they start the company basis this 1 lakh authorized share capital theek hai ab kya hota hai valuation mein do part hote hain shares ke ek hota hai face value aur ek hota hai uske upar ka premium kitna hai theek hai to अब आपने कंपनी ग्रो किया उसको आगे बढ़ाया एंड यू ट्राई टू डू ऑल ऑफ दिस गुड थिंग्स अबाउट इट एंड देयरफॉर बेसिस दैट समबडी रियलाइज कि ओके लिसन आई फील दैट द वैल्यू ऑफ योर ईच शेयर ओके शुड बी राइट नाउ एज टू माय अंडरस्टैंडिंग शुड बी क्लोज टू लेट्स से 2000 रुपीस ओके सो नाउ व्हाट हैपेंस और लेट्स से 1000 रुपीस ओके सो नाउ इनिशियली व्हेन यू हैड फॉर्म द कंपनी यू योर your valuation was 1 lakh rupees because it was 100 rupees it was 100 rupees face value and 1000 was the number of shares but now what has happened is you have still the 1000 number of shares 100 rupees is the face value and and suppose if the share value is 2000 rupees 1900 is the premium on that okay so now what will be the valuation of your company 2000 into this 1000 shares so whatever value comes across it comes to close to i guess share 2 crore or something becomes the valuation of your company so when the term sheet happens the term sheet mein valuation ko kis tarike se dikhaya jata hai valuation ko dikhaya jata hai do tarike se uh, face value kya hai share ka aur uske upar premium kitna hai theek hai so they will say ki uh, okay so let's say mutually we have agreed basis our understanding ki right now your company's valuation is let's say 10 crore rupees okay so how will they show that in the term sheet they will show that okay fine the valuation of the company is not like 10 crores they will write 10 crores but usme usko split bhi dikhate hain ki is uh, taken as 10 crores which is basis this understanding that the company has let's say a thousand shares of that thousand share each share value comes to be at let's say whatever i'm just giving an example uh, 10000 rupees of that 10000 rupees 100 rupees is the face value and and uh, uh, so let's say 100 rupees is the face value and whatever balance is basically the premium so that is how a valuation is shown in a term sheet okay so you actually you play around ki how much is the premium that is being charged on the face value that is how a valuation is quoted in a term sheet okay so when you have this set of discussion with the investors ki listen my tranches are fixed okay my valuation is fixed okay where i say ki okay fine you pay me in true tranches so what sort of discussions that happen at this at this particular stage there can be two three case scenarios first case scenario is you agree with uh, let's say okay fine i'm fine with the tranches uh, i'm okay with the valuation let's try to lock it so under this case it forms like this which i just told you that fine uh, 2 crores is given into two tranches this is the valuation of the company which is this many of this many number of shares where each share value is at this face value and this is the premium over that okay there could be a second case scenario in this case uh, where uh, what happens is that uh, okay i just a quick check everybody is able to understand am i okay should i go slow should i go fast or is this is this okay Okay, so I just got a question. Please explain difference between bullet and tranche payment, and what is achieving milestones? Okay, fine. So I'll just take this question again. See, uh, okay, I'll give an example. Let's say uh, uh, you want to start your restaurant. Okay, now when you want to start your restaurant, you will have expenses. You want to set up a base kitchen. Okay, that base kitchen will let's say I'm saying hypothetically cost. somewhere around 15 20 lakhs okay and uh, you want some chef you want some sous chef you want helpers all of that let's say th- those costs come somewhere around another 10 lakhs okay so that makes it around 30 lakhs then you need marketing expense you need uh, logistic expense and everything so all included it goes somewhere around 70 lakhs okay now my question to you is suppose if you go and you raise a round for investment and you ask that listen i want 70 lakhs okay basis your understanding and all of these things theek hai so you say ki listen i want 70 lakhs of money from you theek hai to investor will understand what is your fund utilization now you give him this kind of fund utilization 
नाउ इन दिस इन्वेस्टर विल सी कि यार ये सत्तर लाख इसको इमीडिएटली ही चाहिए होंगे इसको हम ब्रेक नहीं कर सकते नहीं तो कंपनी का वो मॉडल बनेगा ही नहीं क्योंकि उसको बेस किचन भी बनाना ही है उसको शेफ्स लेने ही हैं उसको इतने नंबर ऑफ आउटलेट्स खोलने ही हैं उसको जो है मार्केटिंग uh, में इतना खर्चा होगा ही होगा जितना इमीडिएट होगा इसको अगर मैं ब्रेक भी करूंगा तो इसके लिए प्रॉब्लमैटिक होगा तो इसको मेरे ख्याल से सेवेंटी सेवेंटी फाइव लैक्स जो ये कह रहा है और जितने का ये रेस करना चाह रहा है ये जस्टिफाइड है तो इसको एक शॉर्ट में दे देते हैं तो इसको जब एक शॉट में हम दे देंगे तो आ, वो उसकी रिक्वायरमेंट है तो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज बुलेट पेमेंट सो द एंटायर फंडिंग ग्राउंड इज नॉट स्प्लिट इनटू टू और थ्री बट इज बीइंग गिवन एज इट इज विच इज कॉल्ड एज बुलेट पेमेंट बिकॉज योर फंड यूटिलाइजेशन हैज जस्टिफाइड दैट यू नीड ऑल ऑफ दिस कैपिटल इमीजिएट एंड अपफ्रंट ठीक है many times what happens is that startups they do want some sort of capital which is they want some capital to on an immediate basis they want some capital which they can actually take after 3 months 4 months and they want some of it as buffer capital to jab wo bahut bar hota hai ki wo jab investor ke paas jate hain round raise karne ke to wo teeno ko add karke bata dete hain let's say ab isi case mein wo bolega ki mujhe jo hai 1.5 crore rupaye ki funding chahiye ya 2 crore ki funding chahiye तो आप कहोगे कि यार भैया तुमको दो करोड़ की फंडिंग क्या है चाहिए तो कहेगा जी प्लान देखो तो कहेगा कि ये मेरा प्लान है ठीक है तो कहेगा यार ये प्लान के हिसाब से तो तुमको दो करोड़ इमीडिएटली नहीं चाहिए तुमको पिछहत्तर लाख इमीडिएट चाहिए और उसके बाद चार छह महीने बाद जब तुम एक्सपैंड करके और नए आउटलेट्स खोलोगे तो तुमको और ले से यू नीड अनदर करोड़ फॉर दैट ठीक है ना अनदर ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स इज अ बफर कैपिटल सो वॉट वी डू इज नाउ इन दिस केस यू विल से लेसन आई विल नॉट गिव यू टू करोड one shot because you do not actually require it what i will give you is i'll give you 75 lakhs as one installment Sec, uh, second tranche uh, i'll give you as 1 crore and probably a third tranche i'll give you as 25 lakhs or he can say ki listen uh, let's not do it so many tranches let's do uh, 75 lakhs as one tranche and 1 crore 25 lakhs as the second tranche because that is what justifies your fund utilization now in this case the 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 funding round is basically divided into two tranches because the fund utilization justifies it theek hai so now it is backed by that milestone ki okay you take 75 lakhs you set up your waste kitchen you come up with two outlets and you start running uh, your outlet and this many number of let's say you need a uh, you will take 100 orders per day or 50 orders per day and then probably basis that you can take subsequent runs because that one crore you would need to expand and replicate this model at various of your outlets so that would be your expansion so once you achieve achieve these milestones i will give you this subsequent one crore 25 okay so that is how a actual discussion happens is it clear sumit sumit is it clear hope it's clear if if there is any doubt please do let me know okay uh, so this is okay great so i have got yes from sumit okay great please do post in your queries uh, via chat or you can just uh, unmute yourself and let me know theek okay? hai so we were there at valuation so this is your valuation okay i have got one more any important point for pitch tech prep for startup uh we can definitely take this offline because uh, <clears throat> that will be a it's a separate set of discussion which we can definitely speak about uh so let's take this offline uh you can contact me and we can take this offline theek hai so let uh, so just uh, further okay so now let me now go to the second step which is the valuation okay which we were discussing so this is how a valuation is shown in your term sheet okay now generally there will be two now if you are now here there are two type of scenarios that happen there are there is a time when you are when you are clear that this would be my valuation of the company theek hai under this case you go with this model where i had clearly told you okay this would be the number of shares this would be the face value and this would be the premium there will be a time in a discussion where you say ki listen you have some sort of a disagreement with the uh, with the investor i won't say disagreement but usually you are not able to figure out what should be the valuation of the company okay so but you still want that money because you need that money to invest and to further grow theek okay? and investor is also ready to invest because he has seen that you need that money immediately to grow okay so what he will say is that okay fine let's do one thing what we will do is we will take that funding we will not lock in this valuation theek okay? hai but what we will do is we will Uh, do a simple agreement called as convertible agreement okay a convertible agreement 
we'll do a simple document which is called as a convertible debt okay a, a convertible debt agreement now in this what will happen is my valuation is not locked but what will happen is uh, yeah i what i will say is that you pay me this money so let's say i'm saying i'm going through 1 crore rupees as a convertible debt option now in a convertible debt option what will happen is that i will take that 1 crore rupees valuation is not uh, decided but what the investor will get get is that whatever money that i would raise in the subsequent round i will give him the haircut in valuation of 25% or 30% so what would be his upside here his upside would be that he is investing in you right now theek hai uh he is uh, he is investing in you right now valuation is not decided but his upside is that whenever you raise the subsequent round whatever valuation that he will get that would be uh, finally agreed upon he will get a discount on that so then in this case it becomes a win win situation because startup is getting that funding that it needs investor is also giving him the funding but he is also getting that discount theek hai and this sort of transaction is very easy to execute because it is only backed by a simple convertible debt agreement you just sign a convertible debt agreement and that's about it because there is no major due diligence that needs to be done in this case okay including shares and all of these things because uh, that's not required here in this case. so that is a second set of uh, scenario that happens where the valuation then may not be recorded in the term sheet what it will be return is uh, this much of funding is being done and it is basis the convertible debt okay which would be then subsequently backed by a convertible agreement which would be the principal set of contract third set of uh, discussion that will happen in in a term sheet would be the clauses so once your funding is locked your valuation is locked then you would want those kinds of clauses which would protect starters and you want also those which would protect investors okay so let's say uh, i'll just take few of these uh, clauses well there are many but i just to give a flavor of it i'll give a few of these clauses okay so let's say uh, there is something called as a tag along right and drag along right okay this is i'm just first saying the investor related uh, protective clauses which happens in the term sheet tag along right and drag along right okay so what will happen is uh, let's say uh, this uh, there is a uh, the startup has raised funding Uh, and uh, there is an investor who has invested in this company okay now what will happen is uh, uh and the investor who has invested is a minority shareholder okay so he has let's say 5% or 7% in the company okay and then there are multiple set of investors in the company so there is somebody who has 1 or 2% there is somebody who has 3 4% and then there is an anchor investor who has like 15% of the company and all of that okay Uh, or thirty percent of the company. So, so there are two, three anchor investors. Now, what will happen is, suppose uh, this company decides to raise another round of investment in terms of funding. Okay. So, what will happen is generally, majorly, board seats जो होगी वो anchor investor के पास होगी. Minority shareholders के पास तो नहीं होगा. ठीक है. So, how will a minority shareholder will protect his rights he will protect his rights by this way so suppose there is a scenario where this company wants to raise further investment it has agreed that there is a strategic investor that has come in place and he wants to invest in it theek hai the terms and the conditions have been decided there is a good amount of premium over the uh, face value of the share so therefore the valuation is also good that money is also good he seems aligned strategic investor is also aligned and everything is great okay so now let's say uh, so now this offer is open theek hai agar isme uh, tag along right nahi hoga minority shareholder ke paas to aisa bhi ho sakta hai ki jo anchor investor hai he will see ki yaar uh, this is a deal to bahut acha raha hai to main apna hi exit kar leta hu aur paisa kama leta hu let the minority shareholder because they are minority shareholder unke paas koi protective right nahi hai to unko chhod dete hain isme unko let's say 5% stake chahiye तो मेरे पास अभी तीस परसेंट है मैं अपना ही पांच परसेंट पूरा बेच देता हूँ मेरे पास स्टिल ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट रहेंगे सो आई विल मेक मनी आल्सो एंड आई कैन डू दैट नाउ इफ यू डू नाउ दीज एंकर इन्वेस्टर्स कैन एक्चुअली डू दैट इफ यू डू नॉट हैव प्रोटेक्टिव क्लॉजेस फॉर द माइनॉरिटी शेयर होल्डर्स ठीक है लाइक टैग अलॉन्ग टैग अलॉन्ग राइट ये कहता है कि अगर ऐसा कोई डील आता है टेबल पे ठीक है 
then that deal has to be open for all and everybody can subscribe basis their uh, whatever purse okay it won't be uh, given to selected few you have to open it for all i have the right to tag along with you in this particular round because my shareholder agreement has that right okay you can't do a close uh, close set of discussions and can close it this is a minority the protective right okay then there is something called as a uh, so this is a tag along right there is something called as rofer theek hai a a rofer is right of first refusal okay right of first refusal kya hota hai ye bhi term sheet mein aata hai investor ke protection pe wo kya hota hai ki yaar what will happen is that uh, because i have invested in you first theek hai now because i have invested you in first if suppose you want to raise another round of investment do should first come to me if i say no then you can go to others because i have taken the larger risk of investing in you further i should have that right of first refusal to basically say ki whether i want to further continue in this round or whether i want to give a pass once i give a pass you can go ahead okay so that is called as right of first refusal there is something called as a preemptive clause now that is also very interesting एक और होता है प्रीएमटिव क्लॉज प्रीएमटिव क्लॉज ये कहता है इट्स वेरी सिंपल सी वॉट है रेज अ न्यू ग्राउंड जनरली ऐसा नहीं होता कि शेयर जो होते हैं ट्रांसफर होते हैं सो लेट्स इफ द कंपनी हैज थाउजेंड शेयर और लेट्स आई एम जस्ट गिविंग एन एग्जाम्पल फॉर डिस्कशन पर्पज लेट्स ए कंपनी हैज हंड्रेड शेयर एंड यू वॉन्ट टू ऑफलोड फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द शेयर तो आप वो पांच परसेंट यानी वो पांच शेयर ऑफलोड नहीं करते हो यू इंट्रोड्यूस न्यू शेयर ओके सो लेट्स ए यू वॉन्ट टू डायल्यूट ट्वेंटी परसेंट सो यू इंट्रोड्यूस न्यू शेयर ऑफ दो ट्वेंटी परसेंट सो योर बेस जो अभी 100 है वो इंक्रीज होके लेट्स से 120 हो जाएगा ठीक है तो अब क्या है प्रीएम्प्टिव क्लॉज ये कहता है कि लेट्स से अगर मैं माइनॉरिटी शेयर होल्डर था या मैं एक शेयर होल्डर हूं कोई सा भी ठीक है मेरे पास 5 परसेंट है इस कंपनी का तो लेट्स से इसमें टोटल नंबर ऑफ शेयर कंपनी के हैं हंड्रेड आई जस्ट गिविंग एन एग्जाम्पल सो आई हैव राइट नो फाइव शेयर ऑफ दिस कंपनी ओके नाउ सडनली दिस कंपनी डिसाइडेड दैट इट वॉन्ट्स टू इज अनदर राउंड ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड इट वॉन्ट्स टू डायल्यू ट्वेंटी परसेंट ठीक है So what will happen is that another new twenty shares will be introduced in this market. So now your total number of shares will will be increased from hundred to hundred twenty. ठीक है? Now I have five shares. जब मैं five shares पे था और मेरा base hundred shares था तो मेरे पास five percent था. अब ये अगर नया introduce हो जाएगा round तो मेरा base हो जाएगा hundred की जगह one twenty. ठीक है? But five divided by one twenty is not five percent. Okay? so therefore this set of investor will have something called as preemptive rights where he will be given an option ki sir uh, you have the first set of option where you can put in this much of capital can buy out of those 20 new shares some of these new shares and can still maintain your 5% so let's say main aur do teen share khareed lunga 6 7 share ho jayenge mere paas to mera 60 divided by 120 and just give me some example which still be 5% so i will have that preemptive right to maintain my share holding percentage within the company first that is called as a preemptive right okay then there is something called as liquidation preference that's again a third and most important clause uh, in startup theek okay? uh, uh, hai uh, for investor protection and then there is a last one which is called as founder vest in these ye char panch se ekdam super critical hote hain ठीक है, so uh, so this one is called as liquidation preference. Now liquidation preference is basically, he suppose if the company is getting liquidated, so whatever the proceeds of that liquidation will happen, that uh, that proceeds would be distributed in what magnitude and at and at what percentage. ठीक है, it defines that. ठीक है, so let's say I'm just giving an example. कि here am I, here is here here is here is me. Uh, Uh, I am an investor and I have invested in this company five hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and I have taken a liquidation preference of two x in this. 
now imagine uh, what will happen is suppose this company where i have invested in theek hai uh, it goes fat and let's say it now is moving towards liquidation theek and there are other many different type of investors chote mote bhi hain theek thak size ke bhi and all of that so what will happen is that uh, okay ye company is now going towards liquidation okay now company liquidation pe move ho gayi aur liquidation ke baad proceeds at 2 million theek hai now of this 2 million because i have a 2x liquidation preference so whatever in money that i had invested in so let's say it was 500000 dollars twice that amount that is 1 million dollar i will get in that liquidation preference and that to first to wo jo 2 million mein 1 million to mere paas hi aa gaya ab baki 1 million aaj baki sab jagahon pe distribute ho raha hai including the creditors and all those people who have taken this claim so that is wrong no कि यार ये तो गलत बात है आपने लिक्विडेशन प्रेफरेंस पे जो है इतना हेवी क्यों लिया है इट हैज टू बी समथिंग रिलेटेड विद प्रो डाटा सो यू हैव टू आल्सो बी वेरी केयरफुल व्हेन यू ड्राफ्ट अ टर्म शीट कि व्हाट काइंड ऑफ लिक्विडेशन प्रेफरेंस दैट यू आर गिविंग ठीक है दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट बोथ फॉर अदर इन्वेस्टर्स एंड एज वेल एज फॉर दी स्टार्टअप व्हिच इज गेटिंग लिक्विडेटेड ठीक है बिकॉज फाउंडर्स विल आल्सो हैव देयर स्टेक सो इफ द कंपनी इज गेटिंग लिक्विडेटेड ठीक है सपोज वर्स्ट केस they would at least because they have run this businesses they would want something out of it but agar liquidation preference mein ek set of investor ko itna sara proceeds chala jayega to what will the startup founders get and what would be the other set of investors that will get so this is again a very important clause that should be part of both term sheet and shareholders agreement another important clause is founder vesting now this is very very important and bahut jagahon pe na isi pe sabse zyada discussions hota hai agreements hoti hain disagreements hoti ठीक है अब इसमें क्या होता है कि दी इन्वेस्टर्स व्हेन दे इन्वेस्ट इन अ कंपनी एट एन अर्ली स्टेज और अ मिड स्टेज ठीक है और एट द ग्रोथ स्टेज दे इन्वेस्ट मोर ऑन द फाउंडर्स देन द आइडिया ओके बिकॉज दे बिलीव दैट आइडिया तो आइडिएट होता रहेगा पिविट होता रहेगा बट फाउंडर्स नीड्स टू बी इंटैक्ट सो इफ द फाउंडर्स आर नॉट देयर इन द कंपनी I mean the business may or may not survive, so I need to shield myself with that. Okay, we have. Okay, I have a question. Is liquidation referred to as exit clause, or what is the difference between the two? No, exit clause is different from uh, liquidation preference. I will uh, come to the exit clause and explain it to you after this, so that uh, you can see what is the difference between the two. Just uh, hold that question for two minutes or five minutes. Okay. Okay. So now the. what are you saying i forgot yeah so we were saying uh, this thing uh, so founder vesting yeah so what will happen is so they are investing in the founders now imagine let's say you are an investor you invested in this company and the founder exited in 6 months so ki yaar humse nahi ho pa raha aur there is some personal this thing that thing and all of it and i want to move out of the business Now you as an investor will get shock of your life ki yar boss maine to paisa tum pe hi to dala tha and I am assuming that you will run the business and make it grow especially in case of financial investors strategic me to fir bhi samajh jayega because they will have some sort of strategic goal in alignment with that but financial investors pehle to because their upside their only interest is I want to invest in you and then probably raise a higher round and I exit and take more set of money from that and that's all that is my area of interest so financial investor will get baffled yaar what is this i mean how can you do this how can you leave me in 6 months or 7 months or 8 months your interest should also be protected your interest should be also as aligned as my interest because i am right now funding you so i am funding you so therefore you need to be there on the table your skin sh- your skin should be there on the table okay so therefore to make that uh, evident there we put founder vesting clause so what the founder vesting clause says is that that if suppose i as an investor invest in this company the founders will not exit this company in next and that's a discussion 3 years 5 years 18 months whatever it is that's a negotiation that you happen so the point is that if suppose you i have invested in you and let's say it is 3 years so founders cannot exit this company uh and when i say exit means actively they cannot take any other job this thing that thing or whatever they have to be very very much in this company and be an administ and play that administrative role at least for 3 years if they exit before this 3 years theek hai in that case 
they will have to repay me back whatever i have invested plus some sort of interest which is a penalty so this is a very strong set of discussion because bahut bar founders kehte hain ki we would be there in the company so koi 5 saal bhi mangta so we would be there in the company but at least don't mandate us for doing this because kya hoga aapke shares lock in ho jayenge ठीक है तो कल को आप अगर जाने भी चाहोगे तो आप बेच नहीं पाओगे बिकॉज योर शेयर्स वुड बी लॉक्ड इन यू यू नीड दैट परमिशन फ्रॉम दीज गाइस टू एक्चुअली सेल ऑफ योर शेयर्स बिकॉज देयर इज अ साउंड इन्वेस्टिंग क्लॉज व्हिच व्हिच लॉक्स इन योर शेयर्स सो यू कैन नॉट इवन सेल इट सो सो इट विल बी सो देयरफॉर इसमें बहुत सेट ऑफ सीरीज ऑफ डिस्कशंस होते हैं बिटवीन फाउंडर्स एंड इन्वेस्टर्स कि व्हाट शुड बी योर फाउंडर वेस्टिंग क्लॉज कितने साल तक आप मिनिमम कमिटेड रहते हो क्योंकि इन्वेस्टर का क्या है कि चलो अज्यूम कर लो कि तीन साल तक आप रह भी ले तो उतने में मेरे को ये तो रहेगा कि बिजनेस इतना ग्रो होगा कि आई कैन गेट अ प्रोफेशनल मैनेजर एंड ही कैन रन द बिजनेस द बिजनेस वुड हैव सीन दैट काइंड ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर ठीक है इट वुड हैव मेंटेन दैट सेट ऑफ यूनिट इकोनॉमी इट कैन स्टिल वर्क ऑन इट्स ओन मे नॉट बी ओवरली डिपेंडेंट ऑन दैट फ्रॉम दिस सो फॉर दैट इन्वेस्टर सो फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट इन्वेस्टर वुड हैव एटलीस्ट सम पीस ऑफ माइंड कि इतने टाइम तक तो ये रहेंगे फाउंडर्स के लिए रहता है कि यार आई नो आई विल बी देयर इन द बिजनेस बट यू नेवर नो यार व्हाट वुड बी द इनिशियल सो आई डोंट वांट टू want this to be written in black and white but there is there in this mind or there will be some set of founders whose job is here get the investment do some stuff raise it to a particular growth rate and exit and just make that money and then probably think something new on a new different set of ideas. there could be that kind of founders also yahan pe sabse zyada clash hota hai alignment ka deep stretching ka to jab agar wo clear ho jata hai wo founder vesting fir aapka term sheet ya shareholder agreement mein aata hai is tarike se ki it would be locked in not locked in all of that theek okay. hai okay then uh, so somebody said exit clause okay so exit clause is totally different exit clause is defined as uh, in a term sheet is that uh, it is totally different from liquidation preference exit clause is that if an investor has invested in this company theek okay. hai and assume he is a financial investor so what would be his area of interest why would he actually invest in this company he will invest in this company because he wants to make money now how will he make money he will make money that today he is invested x amount at some some uh, y valuation i am assuming that you would raise another set of round at some point in time at y plus plus valuation where i will offload that share and whatever is the beach ka margin profit margin that would be my earning theek hai so as a financial set of investor my interest is getting that margin now assume there is a situation that you have invested in this company as a financial investor and suppose you are running the business in normal run normal course of operation but what happens is that कुछ हो गया रिसेशन आ गया स्टफ लाइक दैट एंड जिस हिसाब से आपने ग्रोथ प्रोजेक्ट किया था उस हिसाब से ग्रोथ नहीं हुआ एंड द कंपनी इज आइर एट अ स्टेबल स्टेज और स्लाइटली डिक्लाइनिंग स्टेज एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट एंड देयर फोर यू मे और मे नॉट रेज अनदर राउंड और यू मे वॉन्ट टू रेज अनदर राउंड बट यू आर नॉट गेटिंग अनदर सेट ऑफ टू मी एज अ फाइनेंशियल इन्वेस्टर माई कैपिटल इज लॉक राइट बट आई नीड सम सॉर्ट ऑफ एन एग्जिट ना कि यार मैं कैसे बाहर निकलूं अगर अच्छा केस सिनेरियो हो गया तब तो, तो मैं किसी और को भेज दूंगा लेकिन वर्स्ट केस सिनेरियो में हाउ कैन आई प्रोटेक्ट माय माय राइट्स इन दैट केस ही साइंस एन एग्जिट क्लॉज दैट फाइव इयर्स और थ्री इयर्स बट जनरली इट इज फाइव इयर्स कि अज्यूम कि इफ यू डू नॉट रेज योर रेज अनदर राउंड विद इन फाइव इयर्स ठीक है और वट एवर देन आई हैव दिस एग्जिट क्लॉज वेर इट सेज दैट आई विल यू आई देन इन दैट केस यू विल बाय बैक द शेयर्स or you will arrange an exit for me at least for this much value okay so at least i know at at, at my mind at peace of mind ki kal ko ye company agar doob bhi rahi hai ye bhi hai wo bhi hai aur no, suppose recession aa bhi gaya ye thoda downfall aa bhi gaya at least i have an exit clause which says that the company would uh, arrange me this much amount of uh, money at the time of exit if suppose it things are not good. that is an exit clause liquidation preference is something different ki if the company is liquidated to proceeds ko kis tarike se distribute karna exit clause is just giving an exit to a particular investor assuming ki if the worst case scenario happens at least i'll give you this much of money i'll buy back your shares theek hai so that is the difference between the two hope hope is hope this is clear uh, sumit if any further just let me know theek hai okay yeah it is clear cool now uh so 
so these are good set of clauses with respect to investors and investors uh, protect protecting theek hai then there will be some clauses which you would require from startup uh, from founders and how founders should uh, basically take care of all of these things okay so one is uh, clearly the tranch payment and all okay uh let's so exit clause we have discussed preemptive we have this means then there is something called as a okay there is another clause which goes into the term sheet which is called as clawback okay this is very interesting okay so uh, clawback me kya hota hai so so all these clauses are basically a discussion between an investor and a founder where investor would want a certain so these are the clauses that is a discussion between an investor and a founder now it is up to the discussion where if suppose founder is at a stronger uh, position he will uh, gauge uh, he will uh, he will have an upper hand if the investor is is having a, a stronger position then he will have a upper hand so it is primarily between it is primarily the discussion that how it pans out so it's it can be taken as an investor protective clauses or a founder protective clauses which is largely dependent on the kind of discussion that will happen so for example if founder vesting my investor says ki nahi boss main 3 saal to nahi dunga i will only give you 18 months so he so accordingly that discussion will happen theek hai now that discussion can only happen so let's say uh, ab wo startup friendly kaise hoga kyunki agar startup would be your company would be in a stronger position now why would a company be in a stronger position if a company is having a better unit economics better profitability if it shows to the investor that listen i may or may not need this capital i would still be running my business your capital will only help me achieve whatever milestone i have thought through so let's say ye ek milestone hai jo maine 6 8 mahine mein socha tha ye main abhi achieve kar sakta hu agar tumhara capital aayega agar tumhara capital nahi aayega tab bhi main achieve kar lunga in 6 or 8 months here in this position a startup is at a much stronger position so he will be able to dominate to dominate the investors but if the investor feels that whatever money that he is asking is basically for his survival or he is absolutely in dire need of money otherwise he is gone for, gone for effort then he will try to use that so it is clearly a discussion between the two power which what situation you are in. that's why i always say the company that you should always raise an investment you when you are in a position to dominate because then you can leverage these terms okay and then you can safeguard yourself okay now one i think uh, i think it's almost one so i'll go through with one last clause which is uh, very very interesting uh, which is called as clawback clause which happens in term which is also put it in term sheet and as well as in shareholders agreement so this clawback is basically what happens is let's say i am investing in you okay so my thing is uh, uh let's say i wanted to invest 1 crore in you okay so i will invest 1 crore in you theek hai and uh, uh of that 1 crore i have decided that i will have uh, 12% uh, plus 3% clawback theek hai so basically the round would be of 15% with a 3% clawback i'm just giving an example theek hai now what would be this 3% clawback this 3% clawback would be that eventually what will happen is that uh once i get once the startup will get this money 15% of the equity he will earmark to the investor theek hai now of that 15% equity that he has earmarked to the uh, investor the uh, the startup will continue and keep on functioning and will try to achieve its milestone now assume that if it has achieved his milestone the investor will repay him or will release that 1% 2% or 3% of the equity that he has put it in the clawback theek hai to the founder again back which could then be a part of an esop pool or whatever it is that can be structured depending upon the kind of deal that has been done but this is some sort of a motivational uh, thing that people do uh, or investors do to basically uh, founder so that they achieve their milestone theek hai so a clawback bhi jo hota hai is a very very important uh, set of discussion so you need to be very sure ki agar clawback ho raha hai to kitna ho raha hai kyun ho raha hai theek hai uh, clawback mein kya hota hai investor isliye karta hai kyunki agar aap ab ye works in both the ways 
सपोज यू डोंट अचीव योर माइल स्टोन सो द इन्वेस्टर विल एंड अप विद दोज फिफ्टीन परसेंट ठीक है सो दे फॉर अ स्टार्टअप इट एंड अप दैट इंस्टेड ऑफ गिविंग ट्वेल्व परसेंट आई एम एक्चुअली गिविंग यू फिफ्टीन परसेंट ठीक है for a uh, uh, for a st- uh, so therefore it works very good for him for a for a startup it is saying ki acha if suppose he has gone for a clawback theek hai and there is no other alternative if i achieve that milestone i am not ending up giving but i may end up taking 3% back theek hai to ye ek set of negotiations hote hain ki whether you want to keep a clawback or not keep a clawback if you want to keep a clawback then what sort of percentage you want to put it in that clawback and what should be that milestone whether that milestone is achievable or not लाजी ये सेट ऑफ डिस्कशन होते हैं यही सारे सेट ऑफ डिस्कशन जो होते हैं आपके एक नॉन बाइंडिंग डॉक्यूमेंट में पहले साइन होते हैं ठीक है दैट नॉन बाइंडिंग डॉक्यूमेंट इज कॉल्ड एज अ टर्म शीट ठीक है इट इज नॉट बाइंडिंग बाई लॉ ठीक है इट इज जस्ट दैट यू एंड आई हैव म्यूचुअली डिस्कस्ड एंड वंस वी हैव म्यूचुअली डिस्कस्ड दीज आर द ब्रॉड सेट ऑफ पैरामीटर्स दैट वी थिंक वी कैन वर्क अक्रॉस सो वी हैव नॉट पुट दैट पैरामीटर now we have a non binding documents like some sort of written thing now this is this some sort of written thing we will have a detailed set of discussions with you once we are through with the detailed set of discussions what we will do is we will do the due diligence okay so you said this was my financial this was this thing mere company mein jo share holding pattern hai wo is tarike se hai theek hai maine jo hai mere founders ke upar koi legal action nahi hua you said all of it You have to prove that. So who will prove that? So there has to be a due diligence. So there will be a financial due diligence. There will be a legal due diligence of the company, which will basically basis this term sheet. There will be a due diligence. So this term sheet plus these due diligence. Once it is through, okay. Basis that this term sheet and due diligence skill findings will basically be integrated into a binding document. That binding document is called as a shareholders. Which then becomes your principal set of document. Okay, so if you sign that, that's a binding document. You cannot abide. You have to abide by that. Okay. And the beauty about shareholders agreement is that with every round, the shareholder agreement which changes, that changed shareholder agreement becomes the final set of document. So it it is not like a subsequent round. का जो agreement होगा would be an addendum to a principal shareholder agreement. Every time you raise a round. Uh, the shareholder agreement is being redrafted and whatever is the shareholder agreement that is being drafted at that time supersedes it okay so this is how the term sheet shareholder agreement and uh, important things that come across and the important clauses that you should look at if you are a law student and uh, and if some sort of clients uh, who have come across to you you should basically guide them that these are the these clauses what clauses needs to be there what clauses you have to be careful what is the basis of these clauses and why it should be put in them so so i am more or less done if you guys have any questions please let me know so that i would be in a better position to answer okay so we have two questions can you tell where to where to learn and how to do valuations of a company and a startup okay uh, so one question that has been posted by arthi is that can you tell where to learn and how to do valuation of a company and a startup okay so <clears throat> i will give you some set of an example what we used to do i when i was a part of a fund how do we used to see or justify the valuation of a company theek hai uh see what happens is uh at the early stage okay there is no set matrix okay which defines a valuation so if you go to a bank okay and you apply for a loan a bank will have a finance standard financial template okay ki ye mera standard financial template which is largely linked to the balance sheet of the company i will put these values in this this is which i will get some ratios by taking capital as so mera current ratio kya aa raha hai mera uh, uh, लोन लेना है तो डीएसआर क्या आ रहा है स्टफ लाइक ठीक है तो वो बेसिस पे मैं डेट दे देता था तो देर वॉज स्टैंडर्ड टेम्पलेट दैट यूज टू बी देर ठीक है ना अनफॉर्चुनेटली एट अर्ली और ग्रोथ स्टेज का सिचुएशन आर सो डायनेमिक यू कैनॉट स्टैंडर्डाइज इट सो हाउ डू यू डिफाइन अ वैल्युएशन 
ठीक है ऑफ ए कंपनी इन दैट केस सो योर वैल्यूएशन ऑफ द कंपनी इन दिस केस इज रिलेटेड सो यू हैव टू बिल्ड योर ओन मैट्रिक्स ओके सो लेट्स से व्हेन आई वाज इन द फंड वी यूज्ड टू इन्वेस्ट इन कंज्यूमर स्टेज कंपनीज ठीक है सो हम लोग कैसे डिफाइन करते थे वैल्यूएशन हम लोग ऐसे करते थे हम लोग ने मैट्रिक्स बनाया था इंटरनली कि फर्स्ट वी रेड एंड टू एंड अबाउट द कंज्यूमर स्टेज कौन कौन से कंज्यूमर है कौन कौन सी कंपनीज हैं क्या मैट्रिक्स है उनके ग्रोथ पैटर्न्स क्या होते हैं किस तरीके से होता है उस हिसाब से हमने अपने मैट्रिक्स बनाया कि देखिए कंज्यूमर में एक होता है बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट कि सेम तो सेम स्टोर सेल्स ग्रोथ कितना है ठीक है उसका कैश फ्लो पॉजिटिव है कि नहीं है ठीक है कितने नंबर ऑफ आउटलेट्स हैं उसके ठीक है उसका एक्सपेंशन प्लान कैसा है पर आउटलेट वो कितना कॉस्ट ले रहा है तो अगर वो क्यूएसआर है या वो जो है स्किन केयर है इन सब में है तो पर आउटलेट कितना कॉस्ट दे रहा है कितना रेंट दे रहा है ठीक है बिकॉज रेंट इज अ वेरी क्रिटिकल एस्पेक्ट ठीक है इस बेसिस पे हम एक मेट्रिक्स बना देते तो फॉर एग्जाम्पल रेंट जनरली इन क्यूएस आर वेरीज फ्रॉम फिफ्टीन परसेंट टू एटीन परसेंट सो एनी एनी बडी हु रेंट वेन यू आर डूंग क्विक सर्विस रेस्टोरेंट तो जो जगह आप लेते हो जिसमें आप आउटलेट खोलते हो यू शुड नॉट बी मोर देन 15 टू 18 परसेंट ऑफ योर ओवरऑल रेवेन्यू दैट दैट स्टोर प्रोवाइड्स ठीक है तो सपोज इफ इट इज हायर देन दैट दैट मींस इज रेंट ऑप्ट रेंट हैज नॉट बीन ऑप्टिमाइज्ड सो आई विल गिव हिम अ लोअर पॉइंट बट इफ इट इज बिटवीन 15 टू 8 आई विल गिव हिम अ हायर इफ इट इज लेस देन 15 आई विल गिव हिम अ वेरी हाई पॉइंट हाई पॉइंट्स तो इस तरीके से मैं अपने पॉइंट सिस्टम्स बनाता था सेम स्टोर सेल्स में ग्रोथ हो रहा है कि नहीं हो रहा है ठीक है मंथ ऑन मंथ सेव स्टोर सेल्स ग्रोथ में हो रहा है कि नहीं हो रहा है या एवरी क्वार्टर सेव स्टोर सेल्स में जो है कुछ ग्रोथ हो रहा है कि नहीं हो रहा है एक्सपेंसिस वो किस तरीके इस तरीके से मैं पॉइंट्स बनाता था फॉर एवरी पर्टिकुलर सेक्टर ठीक है सो इट हैज टू बी सेक्टर स्पेसिफिक ठीक है देन दिस इज दैट आई यूज टू कैलकुलेट ओके दिस इज माई पॉइंट अक्रॉस ईच 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 ऑफ दिस मेट्रिक्स ठीक है कि वो स्टोर प्रॉफिटेबल है कि नहीं Outlets. So, for example, uh, that also depends upon the size of the round and the stage of the round. So, suppose if he is coming to me for a three crore or five crore uh, kind of a funding or an angel stage of funding, I would say that if there are four or five outlets, then so by that time, his uh, product stabilized will have been stabilized. His some sort of expansion will have been stabilized. His some sort of product or logistics will have been managed. So, all he needs this capital is for growth. He needs expansion. So then I would say that okay, this is my metric. So somebody who has done five outlets is something which falls within my target criteria for this particular round and this size. In this way, I used to create the model. Then what I used to do was I used to see who said what all set of companies have actually received funding in this stage. Okay, so who of funding in this stage and at what set of valuation? Okay. तो लेट्स अगर कि यूएसआर ही ले लेते हैं तो देर आर मेनी कंपनीज वे रिसीव गुड फंडिंग देर इज सो डॉम फंडिंग और नॉन फंडिंग बट व्हाट इज एक्जैक्टली आर दे रनिंग इन टर्म्स तो अगर लिस्टेड होगी तो उसका मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन क्या है अनलिस्टेड है तो प्राइवेट लिस्टेड है उसका वैल्यूएशन क्या मिला था वर्सेज इज रेबिट वर्सेज इज रेवेन्यू वर्सेज इज रेबिट ठीक है तो उसमें मुझे एक एक्स मिल जाता है कि उस बेसिस पे मुझे पता चल गया कि यार क्यूएसआर में आई कैन ओनली इन्वेस्ट so my range would be anywhere between somebody who is doing 2x 3x kind of valuation i can give a 2x 2x uh, to somewhere around 5x 5 and a half x is my upper piece so x means the revenue to jo bhi uska revenue hai into uska jo multiplier factor hai theek hai so let's say agar wo revenue kar raha hai 10 crores ka to i can give a valuation to him of about 5.5 yani 55 crores ya maximum 60 crores this is all of these calculation ठीक है एंड द लोअर स्पेक्ट्रम कुड बी 1.5x सो 15 करोड़ से लेके ए 55 करोड़ तक का मेरे पास मेरे पास एक पूल आ गया वैल्यूएशन का ठीक है अब डिपेंडिंग अपॉन माय पॉइंट सिस्टम ठीक है हाउ क्लोजली इट इज मैप टू टू दोस सेट ऑफ पीपल हु हैव गॉट देयर वैल्यूएशन इन द 50 55 करोड़ रेंज or into 30 35 5 crore range or into a 15 to 25 crore range i used to peg that and then this is that i used to give him ki boss aapki valuation jo hai 2.5x hai mere hisab se ya ye 4x hai ya mere hisab se ye 5.5x hai theek hai this is what we used to do while calculating the valuation of the company this was the science behind that does this answer your question arti so you have to follow some sort of matrix standard mein kya hota hai agar aap bahut zyada growth stage mein jate hain to they follow a discounted cash flow mechanism but that is at a very 
later stage when your cash flows are very very uh, i mean you have started to have a very stable cash flow and a very growth stage cash flow where cash flow is positive and it has been positive for a good amount of time to usko jo hai aage ja ke extrapolate karke usme se kuch discounting laga ke wo valuation nikalta hai but that is at a much later stage theek hai but at a mid at a growth stage to an early stage you have to follow some sort of matrix so we used to follow something like this which we felt was more scientific and more relevant hope this answers your question arti uh, so one last question for the day that we have okay so arti has asked okay are there any courses on this yes you can check mergers and acquisition course i mean loss eco has mergers and acquisition course you can check it tells you all these details maybe you can look there theek hai or any independent course also but courses related to mergers and acquisitions are something that you should look because that will basically <coughs> specify all of these things which we have to theek hai now something called as a share purchase okay okay share purchase agreement and share subscription is what sumit has asked okay so i'll explain it to you uh <coughs> see share subscription is nothing but it happens when you are doing it in private placement okay uh, so share subscription is a common thing theek okay? hai uh, it can either share subscription can happen in ipo share subscription can happen in uh, in private placement also which is backed by an agreement which is called as a share purchase agreement so what kind of a share of subscription model that you want to understand do you want to understand the ipo wala or do you want to understand the private placement wala so can you please respond okay so i'll explain it to you ip wala okay fine so how how share subscription in ip happens is that uh, uh <coughs> now you want to so ultimate uh, what you call euphoric moment for an investor is when it's when the company that he has invested in goes to the ip okay that is is like the the major milestone of of his investment where he says listen of this so many investment these three companies are going to the ipo that is that proud moment okay so how uh, share subscription happen acha and also for the private place okay theek hai so then i'll explain both theek hai so so that is the reason why everybody feels that is their proud moment that such and such my company has gone for the ipo theek hai now how does a share subscription actually happens in a private placement theek okay? hai uh, so what is a private placement let's first understand that see a private placement is that uh, now um, when you have created a when you have created a set of revenue a growth a net profitability in your doing basis that you qualify the criteria of the sebi either through sme platform or through a normal bourse theek hai you can then apply for ipo which is red herring prospectus and then probably can go for an ipo and then raise the money from the public theek hai but if suppose but that is a very long haul you would still need this capital for growth and all of it and you are not up to that stage so therefore what will happen is you will have a series of discussion in a closed room theek hai with some private set of investors this is my business model this is what i have done this is my market this is my target market this is how i want to grow this much of capital i would need and this is how i would utilize it all of that so that would be a private set of discussion between you and me where we agree that okay fine i am ready to dilute my company means i am ready to issue my shares to you okay so shares every shares has a block it has a share register theek hai to aap mein aur uska ek unique number hota hai ki this number to this number theek hai so once you say aur aur jab wo share number aapko allocate hota hai uske sath aapko share ka certificate bhi milta hai ki itne se itne share number for this particular company is issued in favor of this guy which is then registered to the mca theek hai so it is nothing but like aap jaise public se paisa uthate ho usko shares de rahe ho but that share is being regulated and monitored on the boards ki daily aap प्राइस क्या हो रहा है डाउन प्राइस क्या हो रहा है यहाँ पे आप मॉनिटर नहीं कर रहे इट इज प्राइवेटली हैंडल इट इज बेसिस यू एंड माय जजमेंट ठीक है देर इज नो बोर्ड देर इज नो नो डेली अपडेट बिकॉज इट विल बी लार्जली प्राइवेटली डिस्कस बिटवीन यू एंड मी ठीक है 
so uh, that is what it happens so this is a private placement so in this private placement i have agreed to issue to you these shares which you can basically subscribe this is our discussion so if i am giving you 5% of my share so what set of 5% of that share that I, you will subscribe i have to allocate that ab wo kahan se main allocate karunga apne kaun kaun se existing jo mere shareholders hain yani co-founders hi honge agar unhone pehle invest nahi kiya hoga to kitna uska kitna uska usme kitne wo register mein kitna percentage uska lunga aur kitna uska lunga aur wo jo hai main jo hai aapko subscribe karunga aur wo mca mein jayega that is a private placement सब्सक्रिप्शन दैट हैपेंस ठीक है आईपीओ में इट इज इट इज बेस इज द लिस्टिंग प्राइस वेर दे गिव यू रेड हेरिंग प्रोस्पेक्टर्स और वो एक रेंज डिफाइन कर देते हैं कि ये मेरा एक रेंज है जिस बेसिस पे मेरा आईपीओ जाएगा बिटवीन दिस टू दिस इज इज सब्सक्रिप्शन प्राइस और इस बेसिस पे जो है वो खुलता है तो अब वो खुलने के बाद अगर जो पब्लिक है उस पर उससे वो खुलता है अब उसमें क्या होता है कि there are two things one is qib which somebody has also asked theek hai and uh, there is <coughs> something for public so whenever a company goes to the ipo so it what it does is it's, it's allocate some portion of its capital jo usko qualified institutional buyers se lene hain uh, yeah qib is a licensed okay so i hope that's a question somebody asked they are licensed <coughs> so aapko uh, uh, <coughs> aapko jo hai uh, कुछ क्वालिफाइड इंस्टीट्यूशनल बायर्स से लेने हैं और आपको जो है वो थैंक यू आरती ओके सो आपको सो व्हाट हैपेंस इज लेट्स आई वांट टू टेक दिस कैपिटल ठीक है आई वांट टू टेक 70 क्रोर्स ऑफ फंडिंग ओवरऑल ठीक है नाउ दिस 70 क्रोर्स ऑफ फंडिंग आई फील दैट 50 क्रोर्स आई कैन टेक from public and 20 crores i can take it separately now that separately would happen through qib theek hai jahan pe main kuch qualified institutional buyers ke paas jaunga usko pura ka pura ek block de dunga ye 20% lijiye jahan pe mera ye listing price hai theek hai ye listing price hai jo main ipo mein dal dunga ab kyunki aap 20% pura le rahe ho mere se 20 crores yani kuch percentage aap pura le rahe ho mere se you would get some sort of discount than my listing price because listing price me there are individually individual shareholders because you are taking a block you should get some sort of discount so qib is some sort of a, which will not be shown in that bourse but it is a separate discussion that has happened but i will disclose it ki qib pe main gaya aur mera listing price ye tha theek hai to qib pe kyunki sebi ko ye bhi janna bahut zaruri hai ki aap qib ki agar aap public ko किस शेयर प्राइस पे दे रहे हो वर्सेस क्यूआईबी पे दे रहे हो कोई बहुत ज्यादा डिफरेंस तो नहीं है आर द पब्लिक नॉट गेटिंग चीटेड सो यू हैव टू डिस्कोस कि क्यूआईबी को आपने किस शेयर प्राइस पे आप इशू uh, कर रहे हो क्योंकि अगर उसमें और लिस्टिंग प्राइस जो पब्लिक को जा रहा है उसमें बहुत ज्यादा वेरिएशन है देन यू फील दैट द पब्लिक इट्स गेटिंग चीटेड सो यू हैव टू मेक श्योर एंड दिस ऑल हैज टू बी रजिस्टर्ड बाय सी ठीक है तो वो आप क्यूआईबी पे जाते हो पब्लिक uh, में आप वो ब्लॉक बना लेते हो अब वो ब्लॉक बनाने के बाद क्या कहते हो कि आप एक टाइम फ्रेम देते हो कि ये ये जो है लिस्ट होने, होने वाले तो आप सब्सक्राइब कीजिए कि आई विल ओपन दिस बट आप सब्सक्राइब कीजिए तो मैंने मैं, मैंने सोचा कि मुझे 50 करोड़ रुपीस चाहिए पब्लिक से एंड आई हैव गिवन सम विंडो ठीक है सब्सक्रिप्शन विंडो फॉर पीपल टू सब्सक्राइब व्हेन दिस कि वी आर रेडी टू कमिट दिस मच वी आर रेडी टू कमिट दिस मच वी आर रेडी टू कमिट दिस मच दिस इज द सेम थिंग दैट हैपेंस इन प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट व्हेन यू व्हेन यू give the presentation the investor says ki at the investor bolta hai ki we are ready to invest this much we are ready to invest this much we are ready to invest this much but wo privately hota hai yahan pe public hota hai public kehta hai ki ha we are ready to invest this much wo subscribe karte rehte hain theek hai ab agar un sab ne subscribe kar liya wo sab ka subscription ka aapne value add kiya aur wo value add karne ke baad pata chala wo 100 crore means people are ready to pay 100 crores right now While you are asking 50 crores, ठीक है? So people are ready to pay 100 crores to you. Means your IPO has been subscribed 2x because you had allocated 50 crores you wanted, but people are ready to pay 100 crores. So your IPO has been subscribed 100 uh, 2x. But that does not mean that you will take 2 crore uh, 100 crores. What that will mean is that your IPO is successful because there are many takers to it. But now this 50 crores, I have to. Divide in on a pro rata basis the people who have given this hundred crore ka subscription, so that this fifty crore is being divided equally on that ratio uh, to each these people. So, in this case, me, what will happen? The hundred 
जो जब जिसने ज्यादा सब्सक्राइब किया होगा तो उसको थोड़ा ज्यादा शेयर मिल जाएगा ठीक है लेकिन डिस्ट्रीब्यूट से पचास करोड़ ही होगा दिस इज हाउ अ सब्सक्रिप्शन हैपन्स अब इसी में यही है कि अगर आपने पचास करोड़ सोचा और लोग ने कम सब्सक्राइब किया दे सेट ओके फोर्टी करोड़ ओके और थर्टी फाइव करोड़ ठीक है वट एवर इट इज तो वॉट विल हैपन इज दैट यू आर अंडर सब्सक्राइब ठीक है नाउ इन दिस केस ऑल्सो वॉट हैपन इज दैट जनरली इफ यू अंडर सब्सक्राइब uh it puts a negative feedback within the market and there is a certain percentage i don't know i'll have to check that is it 90% or 85% i can get back to you on that but if your share subscri- share subscription means is less than this percentage so I- i'm saying just for discussion let's say 85% then you will have to forfeit your this thing so even before applying to the ipo you have to be very careful ki aapko kya lagta hai basis your understanding ki aapka share subscribe hoga ki nahi subscribe hoga over subscribe hoga ki nahi hoga kyunki agar aap under subscribe ho gaya to ek to market mein negative news to phaili gayi plus aapko apna jo hai ye ipo ka process jo hai <coughs> revoke karna padega and then probably you may have to reapply with a lesser listing price theek hai to isiliye log fund managers ko karte hain क्योंकि फंड मैनेजर्स जो होते हैं दे आर केपेबल इनफ टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस मार्केटिंग पल्स प्लस यू हैव टू लिस्ट थ्रू फंड मैनेजर दैट इज एस पर सेविंग या इट इज नाइंटी परसेंट यस आई आई आल्सो थिंक इट इज नाइंटी परसेंट थैंक्स सुमित सो आई होप दिस सेशन हेल्प यू गाइस आई हैव ट्राइड माय बेस्ट टू आंसर ऑल योर क्वेश्चन uh thank you so much uh for uh, being a part of this session i just want to understand a uh, few feedback from you what did what did one thing that you learned from this session so if people can unmute themselves one by one and can tell me ki how did you like this session was it insightful there is anything that you can do to improve and one take away okay i got one new message thanks sir for answering our question it was very insightful thank you dhwani uh so i hope that uh, this session was useful for you and uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, spending your yeah 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 go ahead think that uh, this is a very vast field in itself and uh, quite niche and uh, requires a lot of specialization is what i feel understanding all this because yeah. and uh, very less lawyers practice in such kind of area not uh, yeah. this is with the law firms but private lawyers Is yeah. What I feel. Yeah. So thank you very much. You explained it really well, and uh, all the basics are clear. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, thank you guys for joining me on this uh, uh, Sunday mm-hmm. afternoon. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, Lakshmi. Thank you, Lakshmi. Uh, thank you guys for joining me, and have a happy Sunday. See you. Bye.